like someone forgot her team building exercises. I'm not apologizing for not wanting her here. You know, Stefan just brought her here to make it seem like he's moving on. He wants you to think that he's over you, and he wants me to think that I can't get under his skin. You know, you're right. With any luck, I'll only have to tolerate her for a few more days, and then we'll find the cure, and I'll never have to deal with her again. Human Rebecca. Can't imagine her without fangs. You know, you've never talked about what you'll do with the cure once we find it. Will you take it? I don't like to speculate. Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Travers, and this is Popcorn, where we tell you what happens in the pop culture. That's why it's Popcorn, everybody. And you have just seen a scene from season four of The Vampire Diaries, where it's, nobody is allowed to know anything about it. Everybody is quiet. It's as if you're giving away state secrets. The Vatican doesn't have secrets like this, but I'm going to change all that because my guest today is Ian Summerhalder. Welcome. Good to see you, my Welcome. friend. Welcome. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so, for having me. Tell us everything that happens until the end of season four. Now. We just expose everything. We just discussed. Well, you just discussed yes. the fact that we can't. Um, <laughs> so maybe what we should do is we should do this from the Vatican, and we'll unlock the secrets of both. We'll both do the Vatican, the Vatican and, and the Vampire, Vampire Diaries. Diaries, and both start with that. these. Yeah, I never kind of thought that. It's been a long time since I've done something semi-professional with you. I don't do anything professional usually. It's semi. But this is the semi. I understand yeah. that's half professional. Right. That's right. the way it works. But I wanted to start with Vampire Diaries because it is me. You know that I've been through Vampire Diaries from the beginning. You have. I know who Damon Salvatore is. I know what you're playing. I've been through Elijah and Klaus and Silas. I've been through... You being in love with Catherine, and then Elena, and then not knowing, and then being conflicted. But what would you say to those poor benighted souls out there who have never watched it, who might want to come in right now when I say to you, Ian Summerholder, who the hell is this Damon vampire you're playing? He turned into a vampire in 1864. He was in love with Civil a Civil War was ending. Civil War was ending. Mm -hmm. He fell in love with this very beautiful uh, woman who he and his brother had relations with at this, well, not at the exact same time, maybe an hour or two after. It was, and it was still creepy. But he was so in love with mm -hmm. her. And it was that naivete of youth that allowed him to fall so deeply in love with her. And, and ultimately, she betrayed him. And so he spent 150 years searching for her, only to find out that they, they don't love you. They wanted nothing to do with you. Um, and I think that sends him on this downward spiral, but as he's going down the spiral, he's always looking up, making the best out of it. This mm -hmm. guy really enjoys himself. I, you know, he's funny. He is, he is funny. He's not as funny as he used to be. I know, but he still can get it. He can still get that remark in there. He gets really it in there. good put down. He gets it in there. He's horrible to his brother's hair. He is. He really is. He likes to play with his brother's hair. What does Paul think when you have all those uh, put-downs of his hair? He laughs. He laughs. Paul Wesley is actually one of the funnier people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you go at him with something, he comes back very quickly. And usually in a really great accent. Really? Yeah. Does he do different ones? Yeah, we, yeah it's kind of what we do all day. We just make up really <laughs> funny accents. See, that's what I was getting at. And, and What's going on down there in Atlanta? Well, because, it, you know, you have all these dire situations. Everyone's living, you know, constantly on the precipice of death. You're sucking people's blood and you're killing people. And, you know, I always said Damon, whether Damon's saving a kitten mm -hmm. or ripping your head off, he'll have the exact same smirk on his face. That's just how, it's just who he is. It's just who he is. It's just who he is. So, you're, you know, you, you do a scene, you're staking someone, you're ripping someone's head off, and then you cut, and then we go directly into making fun of one another. And you do which face? Which is the Damon Smirk face? And that Smirk, <laughs> that Smirk has made you the person who wins all of these awards, even when Twilight was at its peak, and Rob Pattinson was supposed to be it. You would win People's Choice Awards. You were everybody's favorite vampire. He's a good dude, though. Really? We're very, by the way, we're very, very, very thankful of the success of the Twilight franchise because it ultimately gave 
paved the way for us. I thought you guys never went near it or never even looked at it. Near what? You kept Twilight. It I've never like, seen it. See, there it is. I've never liar, seen liar, it. pants on fire. No, there I actually had never to have been one moment. Never. No, I, I saw one scene, and, and I, okay. not even a scene. Yeah. I, no, I saw a trailer. There's one where there's a car skidding or something, and, and Rob Pattinson blocks it or something. Mm-hmm. But I never. And I you never, said I can't watch any more of this. I no, I just never wanted. To, I never wanted to judge myself. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to, or compare notes. I just figured ignorance is bliss. And I'd be the only person on the planet who has never seen it. I take pride in that. I think you should. I think this is, this is a good thing you heard it here. It's never going to happen. Even when Vampire Diaries is no more, which I can't imagine happening. Because well, you'd never die. I mean, even when you were on Lost and you were Boone, you came back. Yeah, but I died. You died, but then you're there in the finale again, you know, and you came back. That was there a were, phenomenal experience. I'm sure it was. That was so cool. Um, You know, having, after the six year run of that show, that final scene with everyone Mm -hmm. was heartbreaking. You know, these people are like my family, so we were all there. It was definitely last day of school kind of stuff. But Terry O'Quinn picking, playing guitar, everyone singing, you know. Any kumbaya was? uh, We kumbaya. I have video. Happened. Why isn't that on the DVD? I could, I'll, I'll email it to you. Would you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I won't say anything more about it, except I want to say about Boone, again, a guy who is screwed up in many ways. I mean, he's in love with his sister. That's always a problem. I, I think it That's is. It's always a problem, even, no matter what you even do. Even for vampires, it's a problem, I think. Yeah. I mean, good thing Damon didn't have a sister. Mm-hmm. He might be in love with her. Mm-hmm. I mean, he loves his brother, but he's not in love with his brother. But there was an episode, a recent episode, where the brothers have this conversation about Elena. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's really well done. Well, thank you. Yeah. There are, there, you know what, there are some great stuff between the brothers. I think, especially now, we're in search of this cure. And if, by the way, I say cure 900 times a day. Do you? So if you find me... Going in roundabout ways <laughs> to describe it Talking without actually about saying it. Yeah. Let's look up some synonyms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that the that the, right? the boys they you know they have these uh, very choice little bonding moments yeah, over this whole thing with Elena, but Damon doesn't want her to take it, and Stefan does. So there's that really great kind of push and pull with the two of them. You know what I mean? Well, I, I, there's the push and pull, that's the emotional thing. But yeah. the thing that happens to people like myself who watch this is that we believe everything is true. We will talk about the sire bond like there is such a thing. There is, actually. I mean, well, that's what I worry about. You, you guys are in Atlanta. You're saying this all the time about the cure. Yeah. Only one can have it. One can have it. You know, and you're believing it, aren't you? Yeah. This is the kind of life that you're living. I can make you believe it here. How, ma- how often are you with the therapy? Yeah, is this it? Done. You believe it. Oh, I, I really do. How, how often am I with a therapist? Best, yeah, about living that kind of a life. This is my therapy. This is it, just talking it through. Yeah. And you know, not revealing to interviewers these recline? what's actually happened. No, nothing no, happens with these chairs. They don't well, you can make it do almost anything you want to do. It. If I looked at this chair in the eyes, I could make it. You, make could, it. you could do that. I do you love do that. doing that scene when you just... It is fun. It's, it's highly manipulative and, and a little fun. All you need is Peter, oh, Travis. That's all you need. Peter's all you need. 